Most people think that when you move abroad, you leave all your problems behind. But that's not true. They actually become stronger than ever. And money problems are no different. I live in a small city called Toyota in the Japanese countryside. It's where the Toyota Motor Company started. And I work as an assistant language teacher here. I make about 20,000 a year, depending on where the currency fluctuation is at. And even though I didn't move to Japan for the money, the way things are going here right now, it's more important than ever to manage it. I'm from a tiny island in the Caribbean called Trinidad and Tobago. And a lot of my values around money come from growing up there. My parents taught me from a really young age that I'd have to earn any money that <laughs> I wanted. I'd ask for them to give me money to do things and I'd get a task just so I know money didn't grow on trees. And I think I moved so far away to a place that's uncommon for people from my culture because of a love of travel I had and that's another thing that they instilled in me from a really young age, curiosity. Japan isn't a place you come to get rich. That's the wrong idea. Salaries for most jobs are much lower here than their equivalent in the West. But it's a place where the quality of things are so high that even on a modest salary, you can feel well taken care of. Things aren't as costly as you'd think, but it also really depends on what kind of lifestyle you're trying to live. It's a consumer culture for sure. And even in rural Japan, big corporations are always peddling some sort of promotion or special seasonal deal. That and the anime and gaming fan culture catches a lot of people that first come here off guard. I definitely got caught at first as well. I manage my money really differently now compared to when I first got here. This is actually my second time living in Japan. I originally came in 2016 after university on a government exchange program, but I spent like I was fresh out of university then. I traveled a lot, I ate out a lot, I bought all of the fun fan things that you'd, you'd buy when you come to Japan. But a pretty big life event shocked me out of that behavior. The most important person in my life fell ill, and I chose to return home to be with her. Unfortunately, she died. And that really shook me to reevaluate what I wanted out of life. I had a passion for video editing when I was younger, so I started a freelance video editing business. But I really miss the sense of freedom you get from being an outsider. In Japan, the car I had and the house I lived in didn't matter the same way it mattered back home. People are nice, but there is still some fear around foreigners sometimes. So for me, in case of anything, I, I feel comfortable having a large emergency fund. Some would say I'm frugal, but I'd say I'm intentional. I don't spend on things I don't care about, but I refuse to take a bus or the regular train over two hours. So it depends on how you look at it. About 45% of my salary is taken out before hitting my account for taxes, rent and vehicle insurance. And the other 55% is split into six categories. Utilities aren't exorbitant, but I try to keep an eye on how it changes month to month. In the winter, it gets doubled or tripled. I try to be smart about spending, but anything under 15 degrees is considered assault. They make up about 8% of my take home on average. Under household expenses, I have vehicle gas, groceries, and laundry. The city is pretty wide, and I work pretty far away from where I live at times, so gas is a fair chunk, and clothing dryers are more of a luxury item here. So you see that white thing up there? That's what we use for the dryer. It can take a long time. It can take five hours sometimes. So I just pay for the coin laundry because I love the feeling of warm, freshly dried underwear. I know it's not just me. For sure it's not just me. If I'm grocery shopping, I usually check out the discount section first to see what food they have on deal or I'll grab the generic brand of most things. This group together adds up to about 17%. I put 15% of my gross salary in a separate account 
toward my brick house emergency fund, and I never touch that. Another 7% goes toward short-term emergencies, like a flat tire or a quick visit to the doctor. Usually something comes up, but if the devil is asleep that month, then I just roll that over into my big emergency fund. Then there's 5% toward entertainment and guilt-free spending. And I usually just spend it all eating out or buying new snacks I want to try. Everything that's left goes toward investing in myself. At this stage in life, I'm more focused on increasing my earning potential than I am about putting a couple hundred dollars away to invest every year. So a lot of this money goes into ideas I do on this YouTube channel or paying for my website and buying equipment. So in the last year, the yen has dropped about 25%. That's a lot of money over the course of the year. And there is also something called shrinkflation happening. That's when the cost of goods are going up but the size of the packages are remaining the same or getting smaller. The industry I'm in can be pretty exploitative as well. I'm very lucky with my current job. My past experience with the government job has given me some options. Plus, I know with my video editing business, I always have the option to make more money if I leave. But the industry for English language teaching overall is just becoming really really stagnant at least in japan some people are stuck on entry-level salary for years no kidding my goal is to have freedom i want to have location independence and financial independence and i've been working really really hard toward that i feel as if it's a human right to be able to do whatever you want on a day-to-day -day basis i'll probably stay in japan for a couple of years again because the quality of life here is really high, but I don't think I could live in the big city here. It doesn't make sense to me to earn a quote-unquote low salary and live in one of the most expensive places on earth, <laughs> right? <laughs> to struggle, so I'm not gonna do that. And if you want to find out more details about what things cost in Japan, I have a video where I documented six months of spending. It should be somewhere around here. Uh, please check that out.